tiddly pum. The more it goes, tiddly pum, on snowing, there's no tiddly pum. And nobody knows, tiddly pum, how cold my toes, tiddly pum, how cold my toes, tiddly pum, are growing. No tiddly pum. That's just a quickie out of that, that book. In addition to House of Pooh Corner, uh, Milne wrote several other books. Inc uh, included is this one entitled When We Were Very Young. He has a sequel to it that is Now We Are Six. These poems, despite their titles, I think can be read and enjoyed by folks of all ages. James, James, Morrison, Morrison, Weatherby, George, Dupree, took great care of his mother, though he was only three. James, James said to his mother, mother, he said, said he, you must never go down to the end of town if you don't go down with me. James, James, Morrison's mother put on a golden gown. James, James, Morrison's mother drove to the end of the town. James, James, Morrison's mother said to herself, said she, I can get right down to the end of town and be back in time for tea. King John put up a notice. Lost or stolen or strayed. James James Morrison's mother seems to have been mislaid. Last seen wandering vaguely, quite of her own accord, she tried to get down to the end of the town, 40 shillings reward. James James Morrison Morrison, commonly known as Jim, told his other relations not to go blaming him. James James said to his mother, mother he said said he, you must never go down to the end of town without consulting me. James James Morrison's mother hasn't been heard of since. King John said he was sorry, so did the Queen and the Prince. King John, somebody told me, said to a man he knew, well if people go down to the end of town, well what can anyone do? J J M M W G to P took great C O his M though he was only three. J J said to his M M he said said he you must never go down to the end of town if you don't go down with me. This next one is by far my favorite A.A. Milne work. A bear, however hard he tries, grows tubby without exercise. Our teddy bear is short and fat, which is not to be wondered at. He gets what exercise he can by falling off the ottoman, but generally seems to lack the energy to clamber back. Now, tubbiness is just the thing which gets a fellow wondering, and Teddy worried lots about the fact that he was rather stout. He thought, if only I were thin, but how does anyone begin? He thought, it really isn't fair to grudge me exercise and air. For many weeks he pressed in vain his nose against the window pane, and envied those who walked about reducing their unwanted stout. None of the people he could see is quite, he said, as fat as me. Then. With a still more moving sigh, I mean, he said, as fat as I. Now Teddy, as was only right, slept in the ottoman at night, and with him crowded in as, as well more animals than I can tell, not only these, but books and things, such as a kind relation bring. Old tales of once upon a time in history retold in rhyme. One night it happened that he took a peek at an old picture book, wherein he came across by chance the picture of a king of France. A stoutish man and down below the words King Louis so-and-so, nicknamed the handsome. There he sat, and think of it, the man was fat. Our bear rejoiced like anything to read about this famous king. Nicknamed the handsome, there he sat, and certainly the man was fat. Nicknamed the handsome, not a doubt, the man was definitely stout. Why then a bear, for all his tub, might yet be named the handsome cub. Might yet be named, or did it mean that years ago he might have been? 
For now he felt a slight misgiving. Is Louis so-and-so still living? Fashions and beauty have a way of altering from day to day. Is handsome Louis with us yet? Unfortunately, I forget. Next morning, nose to window pane, the doubt occurred to him again. One question hammered in his head, is he alive or is he dead? Thus nose to pane, he pondered, but the lattice window, loosely shut, swung open with one startled O, oh, our Teddy disappeared below. Now there happened to be passing by a plump man with a twinkling eye, who seeing Teddy in the street, raised him politely to his feet, and murmured kindly in his ear soft words of comfort and of cheer. Well, well, allow me, not at all. Tut, tut, a very nasty fall. Our Teddy answered not a word. It's doubtful if he even heard. Our bear could only look and look, the stout man in the picture book. The handsome king, could this be he? The man of apteposity? Impossible, he thought, but still no harm in asking. Yes, I will. Are you, he said, by any chance, his majesty, the king of France. The other answered, I am that, bound stiffly and removed his hat. Then said, excuse me, with an air, but is it Mr. Edward Bear? And Teddy, bending very low, replied politely, even so. They stood beneath the window there, the king and Mr. Edward Bear, and handsome, if a <coughs> trifle fat, talked carelessly of this and that. Then said his majesty, well, well, I must get on, and rang the bell. Your bear, I think, he smiled, good day, and turned and went upon his way. A bear, however hard he tries, grows tubby without exercise. Our teddy bear is short and fat, which is not to be wondered at. But do you think it worries him to know that he is far from slim? No, just the other way about. He's proud of being short and stout. That's really great stuff. For those of you who haven't read it, I strongly urge you to do so. <coughs> Another one of my favorites uh, is a fellow who, uh, long since dead, who was the son of a, a very well-to-do family, East, Eastern uh, United States family, who during the 1920s would wander about the countryside dressed in rags, uh, as a bum during the uh, height of the Depression era. And he wrote <clears throat> several volumes of poetry and songs. Uh, and he gives detailed instructions for the recitation of his uh, poems, which I completely ignore. I think the man was a marvelous poet. I don't think he knew beans about orchestration. So uh, these are my own interpretations of these types of, of poems. He wrote one. <clears throat> on the founder of the Salvation Army, General William Booth, who was a uh, extremely well-known, uh, much admired uh, person in the early 19, late 1800s, early 1900s, in the, uh, actually in all of North America. He founded the Salvation Army, and to this day, it still reflects the, many of the principles and the precepts that he brought to it. Uh, the executives of the Salvation Army work for uh, what in the corporate world is considered fish heads and rice. Uh, they make very little money. These people are extremely dedicated. They do a, a very good job. <coughs> this poem is entitled, Gen General William Booth Enters into Heaven. Booth led boldly with his big bass drum, and the saints smiled gravely, and they said, he's come. Walking lepers followed rank on rank, lurching bravos from the ditches dank, drabs from the alleyways and drug fiends pale, minds still passion-ridden, soul powers frail. Vermin-eaten saints with moldy breaths, unwashed legions with the ways of death, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Every slum had sent its half a score, the round world over, Booth had grown for more. Every banner that the wide world flies boomed with glory and transcendent dies. Big voiced lasses made their banjos bang, tranced fanatical they shrieked and sang, are you washed in the blood of the lamb? Hallelujah, it was queer to see, bull-necked convicts that the land made free. Looms with trumpets blow to blare, 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 on and upward through the golden air. 
Booth died blind and still by faith he trod, eyes still dazzled by the ways of God. Booth led boldly and he looked the chief, eagle countenance in sharp relief. Beard of flying, heir of high command, unabated in that holy land. Jesus came out from the courthouse door, stretched his hands above the passing poor. Booth saw not, but led his queer ones there, round and round the mighty courthouse square. Yet in an instant all that blear review marched on spotless, clad in raiment new. The lame were straightened, withered limbs uncurled, and blind eyes opened on a new sweet world. Drabs and vixens in a flash made whole, gone was the weasel head, the snout, the jowl. Sage and sibyls now, and athletes clean, rulers of empires in a forest green. The hosts were sandaled and the wings were fire, but their noise played havoc with the angel choir. Oh, shout salvation, it was good to see, kings and princes by the lamb set free. The banjos rattled and the tambourines jing jing jangled in the hands of queens. And when Booth halted by the curb for prayer, he saw his master through the golden through the flag-filled air. Christ came gently with a robe and crown for Booth the soldier while the throng knelt down. He saw King Jesus, they were face to face, and he knelt a-weeping in that holy place. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We'll have another one by Lindsay shortly. We go back to Mr. Kipling. <coughs> this, <coughs> this poem is uh, based on his service in India and is entitled Ganga Din. You may talk of gin and beer <coughs> when you're quartered safe out here and you're sent to penny fights at Aldershot it. But when it comes to slaughter, you'll do your work on water, and you'll lick the bloomin' boots of him that's got it. Now in Inja's shiny climb, where I used to spend my time, a servant of Her Majesty the Queen, of all that black-faced crew, the finest man I knew was a regimental bishti, Gunga Dean. It was Dean, 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 you limpin' lump of brick dust, Gunga Dean. Hi, slippery ether, oh, water get it, panny leo, you squiggly-nosed old idol, Gunga Dean. Now the uniform he wore, was nothing much before, and rather less than half of that behind, for a piece of twisty rag and a goatskin water bag was all the field equipment he could find. When the sweatin' troop train lay in a siding through the day, where the eat would make your bloomin' eyebrows crawl, we shouted Harry by till our throats were bricky dry, and we whopped him cause he couldn't serve us all. It was Dean, 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 you heathen, where the mischief have you been? Put some jubilee in it, or I'll marrow you this minute if you don't fill up my helmet, Gunga Dean. He would dot and carry one till the longest day was done, and he didn't seem to know the use of fear. If we charged or broke or cut, you could bet your bloomin' nut. He'd be waiting fifty paces right flank rear. With his music on his back, he would skip with our attack and watch us till the bugles made retire. And for all his dirty eyed, he was white, clear white inside. And he went to tend the wounded under fire. It was Dean, 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 with the bullets kicking dust spots on the green. When the cartridges ran out, you could hear the front files shout, high ammunition mules in Gunga Dean. Now I shan't forget the night when I dropped behind the fight with a bullet where me belt plate should have been. I was choking mad with thirst, and the man that spied me first was our good old grinning, grunting Gunga Dean. He lifted up me head, and he plugged me where I bled, and he gave me half a pint of water green. It was crawling and it stunk, but of all the drinks I've drunk, I'm gratefulest for one from Gunga Dean. It was Dean, Dean, Dean. Here's a beggar with a bullet through his spleen. He's crawling up the ground, and he's kicking all around. For God's sakes, get the water, Gunga Dean. He carried me away to where a dooley lay, and a bullet came and drilled the beggar clean. He put me safe inside, and just before he died, I hope you like your drink, says Gunga Dean. So I'll meet him later on in the place where he is gone, where it's always double drill and no canteen. He'll be squatting on the coals, giving drink to poor damned souls, and I'll get a swig in hell from Gunga Dean. Yes, Dean, Dean, 
din. You latherushin leather gunga din, though I belted you and frayed you by the living God that made you. You're a better man than I am, gunga din. And finally, last one. This is another Vaishal Lindsay <coughs> poem entitled The Congo. <coughs> Fat black bucks in a wine barrel room. Barrel house kings with feet unstable, sagged and reeled and pounded on the table. Pounded on the table, beat an empty barrel with the handle of a broom, hard as they were able, boom, boom, boom. With a silk umbrella and a handle of a broom, with a boom lay, boom lay, boom lay, boom. Then I had religion, then I had a vision. I could not turn from their revel in derision. Then I saw the Congo cutting through the black, cutting through the jungle with a golden track, and then along that river bank a thousand miles, tattooed cannibals danced in files. Then I heard the boom of the bloodlust song, and a thigh bone beating on a tin pan gong, and blood screamed the whistles and the fifes of the warriors, blood screamed the skull-faced lean witch doctors, whirly deadly voodoo rattle, harry the upland, steal all the cattle, rattle, 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 bing, boom lay, boom lay, boom lay, boom. A roaring, epic, ragtime tune from the mouth of the Congo to the mountains of the moon. Death is an elephant, torch-eyed and horrible, foam-flanked and terrible. Boom, steal the pygmies. Boom, kill the Arab. Boom, kill the white man. Who, who, who? Listen to the yell of Leopold's ghost burning in hell for his hand-maimed host. Hear how the demons chuckle and yell, cutting his hands off down in hell. Listen to the creaky proclamation blown past the lairs of the forest nation, blown past the white ant's hill of clay, blown past the marsh where the butterflies play. Be careful what you do, or mumbo jumbo, god of the Congo, and all the other gods of the Congo, mumbo, Jumbo will hoodoo you. Wild crap shooters with a whoop and a call dance the juba in the gambling hall and laugh fit to kill and shook the town and guide the policemen and laugh them down with a boom lay, boom lay, boom lay, boom. Then I saw the Congo creep <coughs> through the black, cutting through the forest with a golden track. A Negro fairyland swung into view, a minstrel river where dreams come true. The ebony palace soared on high through the blossoming trees to the evening sky. The inlaid porches and casements shone with gold and ivory and elephant bone. And the black crowd laughed till their sides were sore at the Babylon butler in the agate door. And the well-known tunes of the parrot band that thrilled on the bushes of that magic land. A troop of skull-faced witchmen came through the agate doorway in suits of flame. Yea, long-tailed coats with a gold-leaf crust and hats that were covered with diamond dust. And the crowd in the court gave a whoop and a call and danced the juba from wall to wall. But the witchmen suddenly stilled the throng with a stern cold glare and a stern old song. Mumbo, jumbo, will hoodoo you. And then from the doorway, as fat as Schultz, came the cakewalk princes in their long red coats, canes with a brilliant lacquer shine and tall silk hats that were red as wine. And they pranced with their butterfly partners there, cold black maidens with pearls in their hair, knee skirts trimmed with the jasmine sweet and bells on the ankles and little back feet. And the couples railed at the chant and the frown of the witchmen lean and laughed them down. Oh, rare was the revel and well worthwhile that made the glowering witchmen smile. The cakewalk royalty then began to walk for a cake that was tall as a man, to, <clears throat> to the tune of boom lay, boom lay, boom, while the, while the witchmen laughed with a sinister air and sang with the scallywags prancing there. Walk with care, walk with care, or mumbo jumbo, god of the Congo and all the other gods of the Congo. Mumbo Jumbo will hoodoo you. Beware, beware, walk with care. 
A good old brother in the slums of the town preached to the sister for a velvet gown, howled at a brother for his low-down ways, his prowling, guzzling, sneak thief days. He beat on a Bible till he wore it out, starting the Jubilee revival shout. And some had visions as they stood on chairs and sang of Jacob in the golden stairs. And they all repented a thousand strong from their stupor and savagery and sin and wrong, and slammed with their hymn books till they shook the room with glory, 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 and boom, boom, boom. Then I saw the Congo creeping through the black, cutting through the jungle with a golden track. And the gray sky opened like a new rent veil and showed the apostles with their coats of mail. In bright white steel they were seated round and their fire eyes watched where the Congo wound. And the twelve apostles from their thrones on high thrilled all of the forest with their heavenly cry. Mumbo Jumbo will die in the jungle, never again will he hoodoo you. Never again will he who do you. And then along that river bank a thousand miles, the vine snared trees fell down in files. Pioneer angels cleared the way for a Congo paradise for babes at play, for sacred capitals for temples clean, gone where the skull faced witch men lean. There, where the wild ghost gods had wailed, a million boats of the angels sailed with oars of silver and prows of blue and silken pennants that the sun shone through. Twas a land transfigured, was a new creation. O oh, a singing wind swept the Negro nation, and on through the backwoods clearing flew. Mumbo Jumbo is dead in the jungle, and never again will he who do you. Never again will he who do you. Redeemed were the forest, the beasts, and the men, and only the vulture dared again by the far lone mountains of the moon to cry in the silence the Congo tomb. Mumbo Jumbo will hoodoo you. Mumbo Jumbo will hoodoo you. That's for that. Anybody have any questions? I thank you very much. I've enjoyed myself tremendously. I hope you have uh, had a good time, and I hope that uh, this will encourage some of you to take up poetry as an advocation, as a hobby. As you can tell from my reaction to it, I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy doing it, whether it's a crowd as large as this one or bigger, or whether it's my buddy and I in a bottle of scotch over a campfire. <laughs> so thanks again. would like to thank you for taking part, taking part, taking time out of your busy schedule to read your poetry to us. Your enthusiasm really made us appreciate poetry a bit more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you will be expected in your B2 class this afternoon. Uh, however, that doesn't start uh, for about another 10 minutes. This clock is wrong up here, by the way. I think I've got uh, about 10 after 3, two, 2 right now, so. Yeah, I just knocked it off the